So this is the new Sony FE 35mm f1.4 G Master lens. This is the latest in the G Master lineup from Sony. It's extraordinarily impressive. shooting on this lens for a couple weeks now and I'm really impressed with the performance that I'm getting out of this. Sony hit a stride with their G Master Primes I would say about two years ago and it started with the FE 400mm f2.8. It's a very specialized lens but the next lens to follow was the 24mm G Master which this lens in many ways is more in the style of that lens. It's one of my favorite lenses that Sony makes and it's kind of like a big brother slightly longer focal length that pairs really well with the 24. Also worth noting is this is not the first 35 millimeter f1.4 lens that Sony has produced. Actually started one of their early lenses was part of the Zeiss collaboration. It was the ZA 35 millimeter f1.4. That's a lens that I've had a long love and hate with. I love the optics with it. They did have some production issues early on. Later on that seemed to be cleared up. It's a good lens but it suffers from really bad chromatic aberrations and it's just a lot to clean up and post. This is a much more refined lens. It has a much better optical design. That says a lot because I felt like the ZA had really good optics, this lens is just even better. If we look at the MTF charts, you can see that this lens is going to be extremely sharp and has a really smooth bokeh rendering at large apertures. If we take an image to see the field of focus, so what I did here is I took an image of the street because it is flat, has texture to it. If we take this into Photoshop, run it through the find edges filter, we can see the field of focus and you can see that there is pretty much no field curvature. There's a slight wave but this is extremely well executed. This is perfectly acceptable. It's not going to impact the focus when you're shooting something flat. One of the things that I personally really like to see in modern lens design is when you look at the contrast between what's in focus and what's out of focus. With modern lenses we have the manufacturing techniques right now to build these lenses at really high resolutions and that's what we've got on this lens and so when you have that mixed with a really nice bokeh look it looks incredible and this lens really delivers in that regard. The lens is incredibly sharp when you have things in focus and it's really nicely blurred when they're not. And I'll give you two examples here. So this is a shot that was done wide open at f1.4. So we have a little bit of that three-dimensional look because we can see the areas that are out of focus. But if I stop down to f11, the sharpness is clearly there when you need it. When you're shooting wide open, the bokeh is really nicely rendered. Nothing is distracting. It doesn't have any of the nervous qualities that you see in lesser lenses. And the transitions from the field of focus are really beautifully handled. And thanks to the two XA elements, we don't have any onion rings in the spherical highlights. Now, one of the things about XA elements, and this is a technology that's very specific to Sony and what they're doing. XA is their version of an aspherical element, stands for extremely spherical, and they have a manufacturing process to build these tolerances down to like 0.01 microns, and so it's extremely smooth. And you're going to notice this when you see things like bokeh and the way that that's rendered. Anytime you have those spherical highlights in lesser lenses, you're going to see a lot of onion ringing. The Sony's are very clean. Physically, this lens is only slightly larger than the 24 millimeter G Master, which was one of my favorites in this lineup. It's very compact. It's also very lightweight, coming in at only 524 grams. This is a really nice versatile lens, and one of the design directives from Sony was to build a lens that was clearly compact with the highest optical quality possible, but they wanted to have a lens that people could just leave on their camera all the time and be ready to shoot. And I think that this lens, combined combination of the focal length of being a 35 millimeter lens, the close focus, the optical quality, it really suits that well. This lens features an aperture collar as well as a focus ring, and on the side of the lens you're going to find a function button that can be customized in the menus to various things. A lot of people will use this for depth of field checking. I like to use it on especially on the a7R4. If you want to crop in and use the APS-C area of the sensor you can switch back and forth and set that button up to do it. There's also an autofocus manual focus selection switch and then there's a second switch on the bottom of the lens for declicking the aperture ring. So if you want to do smooth aperture changes in video use you're good to go. This lens features sealing at all of the buttons and rings for dust and moisture resistance. It also features a hybrid material construction. This is really cool because you get a mix between high durability and a reasonable weight. This is not a heavy lens at all. In fact, compared to the ZA version of this lens, it's much lighter and it's actually lighter than most of the competition too. In terms of optics, we have 14 elements in 10 groups. Two of these elements are those extreme spherical elements that I talked about earlier. We also have one extra low dispersion element. Now, this is the second lens from Sony to feature 
feature the new Nano AR coating version 2. The first was the 12 to 24 millimeter f2.8 G Master that came out last year. And just like that lens, it is noticeably better in terms of the way that this renders color and contrast. Flare and ghosting are pretty much eliminated when you're shooting in really high contrast situations like this one where I'm shooting pretty much into the sun as it's going down and I just could not get this lens to flare very much at all. It really performs well when you're pushing it. We have an 11 blade circular aperture configuration, which is really nice because it's going to retain the bokeh balls when you use smaller apertures. You don't have to be wide open to get a smooth bokeh rendering. Sun stars are possible with this lens. I would not say they're particularly out of control and they're definitely not distracting. I don't think they're the big feature of this lens, but they're there if you want them. So a quick word about micro contrast in this lens. So all of the example images that you're seeing in this video were shot on my Sony a7R 4 which has a pretty incredible sensor and it's capable of capturing a really wide dynamic range. It's got an excellent dynamic range sensitivity to it. When you pair this lens with this body, it's just about as good as it gets. And it reminds me a lot of the lens that Sony released last year, which was the 12 to 24 millimeter G Master lens, which pretty much kind of set the standard for wide angles because that lens is so sharp, it outperforms most wide angle lenses that are primes in that range. And this is a zoom lens we're talking about. And just like the 12 to 24 millimeter G Master, it's really sharp when you need it. And it gets a lot of detail that's retained in both the shadows and the highlights. So if you're actually rescuing shadow detail or highlight detail, it's not going to go muddy on you in those areas. It's very sharp and has a really wonderful rendering to it. In my testing with this pre-release version of the 35mm GM, I think they've done an outstanding job here. Minimum focus distance on this lens is 10.6 inches. So it's not quite a macro lens, but it does give you a great deal of versatility for close-ups on subjects or even portraits if you want to do that. Autofocus on this lens is pretty much outstanding as you would expect it to be. I think right now Sony really have set the gold standard in terms of autofocus performance. We have two XD motors. This stands for Extreme Dynamic. These are not rotational actuators. These are linear motors. And so the idea is they have better efficiency. They're going to be quieter. There's less movement. And so you're going to get extremely fast, silent, and vibration-free performance. The lens features internal focusing and responsive manual focusing with excellent response and fine linear focus control. So this is really good when you're using critical focus for stills or video. Now, personally, I am not a big fan of focus by wire. And unfortunately, that is the technology. The way they're building these lenses with the autofocus motors that are no longer rotational, you pretty much have to have a focus by wire setup. Having said that, I do think Sony do this the best as well. I'm used to manual focus lenses, and I feel that the performance is very similar in feel. I mean, it's definitely a little bit lighter. You're not actually turning or moving elements, but it actually, I feel very comfortable and at home with it, and it works really well. And another Another exciting feature of this lens is the price. This comes in at $1,400 US, which I think is a heck of a deal for a lens of this quality. So with the 35mm f1.4 G Master, Sony has combined exceptional optics with some amazing autofocus performance. You really do get the best of both worlds with this lens. They've done it in a package that is not massive. It's a very comfortable size. In fact, one of the things that Sony intended with this lens was to have something that you could leave on your camera at all times that could just be ready to go. And I think they've done that very successfully. It reminds me a lot of what I felt about the 24mm G Master when that came out. And I like the fact that they're revisiting some older lenses in terms of focal length in their lineup that they didn't have great versions of and they're revisiting them with this new aesthetic that they're working on right now which I think is just unbelievably good. Having said that, I think it would be really awesome to see a 50 millimeter in this kind of size package. 50 millimeter F1.4 doesn't need a lot of glass. I think they're doing some great things with the XA elements and I think they could do it. So it'd be interesting to see what they come with, with down the road a little ways. Would love to know what you guys think as well. So drop me a comment. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.